Okay, this is going to be the video for the do-it-yourself Harbor Freight wet blast cabinet. I will go over everything in the building process with you. Um, it's going to be a whole bunch of short little videos that I'm editing together that will take you through the build process and problems I had and solutions and uh, all kinds of things. But this will get you up and running with your own wet blast cabinet without spending a ridiculous amount of money. Um, this cabinet was built with pretty much quality parts. Um, even the Harbor Freight cabinets do some quality that I used. So I will get on with the build of the Venom Blaster. Okay, I was going to make a video. Actually, I was going to do a photo session, just a story about how to build a vapor hone wet blast cabinet with a harbor freight sandblasting cabinet but i decided i'll shoot some video and then i'll try and edit all this together when i'm done um for those of you that have never seen the results of a wet blasting vapor honing cabinet for cleaning engine parts it is great when you're rebuilding engines and other things so we're going to try and do that occasionally we'll get a hello from mikey over here who's hanging out all right so let's start with the cabinet um you can get this cabinet for $139 at Harbor Freight. Now, I went to Harbor Freight after owning one of these cabinets and using it for regular sandblasting, and it worked well. Um, I decided to use the same cabinet to make the, the wet blast cabinet. Um, when I got to Harbor Freight, I realized that over the last few years, they really changed this cabinet quite a bit. Uh, so I didn't want to use the current one based off the ideas I had. So I wanted one of the cabinets from a few years ago. Um, I went on to uh, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and a few others, and I happened to find this. Somebody had bought it, brought it home, stuck it in the garage, and never opened it and never built it. So I picked it up for 100 bucks. And let me go over some of the reasons. I mean, you can use the $139 cabinet, but I'll tell you why. If you can find one of these, it's much better. Okay. Um, first of all... And, and again, this video, I started shooting pictures, so I've done a little bit of work, but I'll go over everything. Um, this cabinet that they have in its original version is not only a thicker steel, um, but you can see it has the light box on the top. And then there's a cutout inside the cabinet for the lights. So they no longer have that light box. But the main difference, especially when you're doing a wet glass cabinet, is that the top and the bottom of this cabinet were one piece. In other words, that's all welded together and the base is all welded together and they don't come that way now. Now what you get is you get a whole bunch of flat pieces and you're literally bolting together this whole box and the bottom tub and that's you know going to take a hell of a lot more sealing to keep from leaking when it gets wet uh, as far as other things so you really want to try and find the original cabinet um, so i'm going to pause here and we'll get ready and i'll start going over what i've done so far okay here we are back to building a wet blasting cabinet from the harbor freight um, sand blasting cabinet Okay, so the first thing I did was assemble the legs onto the cabinet. The other thing is I started using, I replaced the hardware with stainless steel screws. Um, I built a dolly with wheels on it for the bottom. And I built the dolly just out of two by fours and put the wheels on it. And then cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood once the dolly was in and secured and laid it down on top and screwed it down. That is covered with um, truck bed liner coating, just to give it a little bit of weatherproofing. Um, so now we've got basically the way it comes, the original cabinet. The top piece, the legs, and that base. Then I made some wooden legs to prop up the bottom tub while I work on it. So, because once it's in there, it's too difficult to work on it. So here's the pump that I'm using. It is a solid waste trash pump. Okay, and this pump um, will pump the slurry no problem. In fact, it's the same pump that's used in a lot of commercial cabinets that are thousands and thousands of dollars. 
So here's the info on the pump. Okay, but the problem is when you go to set the pump down inside, the cabinet tapers down and has that release door on the bottom for taking out the sand media. And for the design I'm going with, I want the pump to be able to stand upright. And the height is critical because this pump is going to barely fit the way we need it. In fact, I've already taken, let me get, I've already taken the handle off the top of the pump because with the handle on the pump, it's too tall and we're going to have to make a strain relief and this is going to have to bend down like that and then we should just make it in into this cabinet like that. All right, so we've, so what I did was to get the pump to the right height, I went, I think I went to Lowe's and I picked up a shower drain that fits two inch PVC on the bottom and sticking a two inch PVC coupler onto the bottom of this lifted it just just about to the exact height you need it where the uh, pump will sit inside and sit flat and um, but I also wanted to put a, a, a small rubber shock absorber between the bottom of the pump and the uh, top of the shower fitting so I went and I bought a silicone hot plate and then I cut it to the size of the drain so when all this is done I'll, I'll secure that to the top and then the pump sits in there exactly edge to edge the edges of the pump touch the the tub but they don't they just barely touch it um, so then what did I do about the bottom door and leaking well first thing I did was I used let me see if I have it here it's a great sealant caulking um, it's called, here's a tube of it, it's called Lexel. Um, I've used this stuff in the past. It sticks to anything. It is probably the best. I would use this over silicone any day. Um, it, it's amazing stuff. It's a little more expensive. I think this is between $8 and $10 a tube, but th this is incredible stuff. Um, so what I did was I sealed the door closed on the bottom got it completely sealed up and then I sealed around the bottom on the inside and I let that dry for 24 hours then I put the uh, the shower drain with the PVC coupler in there and then I mixed up um, fiberglass resin and poured some fiberglass resin down in there and I mixed some cabosil into the fiberglass resin those of you that that have done boating and fixed hulls and you understand Cabosil, it's I guess it's like a ground plastic maybe. It's it's like flour. It's super super light. But um, I remember when I used to fix my jet skis and boats and working on the hulls, you'd mix this in with the fiberglass resin to make your gel coat. And so I mixed some of that in just to give it something in there, just so that it wasn't raw resin. And I just used um, I got a picture of it here for you. I just used Bondo fiberglass resin. There's a quart of it. Or actually, they rip you off these days. It's 28.8 ounces. They don't even give you a quart anymore. So, and it comes with the hardener. So, I mixed up some of that with the cabosil. And then I poured it around the edges of the shower drain until it came up. It took, took about, I'd say, a quart and a half to do that. Which is more than I thought it was going to take. But once you get started, you can't turn back. So now I'm going to pour just a little bit more to come up almost flush with the edges of the drain and then I'll be done with that step for now. Now on top of that is this grate. Okay, and the grate sits inside on top of that and then your screening goes over that. That's the platform you work on. Um, but it comes with, and I'll show you the other side because it's still on it. It comes with this horrible um, weather stripping. I mean, it's just, first of all, half of it doesn't stick. It's got pieces of styrofoam from the packing materials where it didn't stick. It's just terrible. So I've been peeling this stuff off. I started on the other side. I've been peeling that off and I'm gonna, I went and bought some new weather stripping that's much thicker, that's waterproof, it's closed cell. Um, and I'll be replacing that on both sides. I also will be taking out this middle support, this one that's marked out. 
um, because once I get this assembled, I'll be able to drop the pump in through the top. And if there is any problems and I need to work on it, I'll be able to pull it out. So I've got that set up so that I'm going to cut that out, put the new weather stripping on. Um, I've also run that Lexel up the sides of the cabinet. Everywhere there's a seam, I've run the Lexel. Like I said, it's in, that's the most incredible sealant caulking that I've, that I've ever used. So what I'm going to do is I will um, finish this up here. And then I will start the video back up after I clean off all the muck and put the new um, weather stripping tape on. Okay, we've got all of the old weather stripping cleared off. Um, I just used Goo Gone and then I scrubbed it down. I also cut out the middle section and then sprayed some Krylon, not Krylon, Rust Oleum Red over the bare metal where the center piece was cut out. Again, cleaned it thoroughly, dried it. Um, put on the new weather stripping. Now the weather stripping I'm using is not only thicker, it's a closed cell foam so that it's not a sponge foam. That's one thing you want to look at when you go to get your weather stripping. You want the closed cell so the water can't get through it. When I put the first strip on the bottom side, because both sides are, are done, when I put the first strip on the bottom side, I then took an old soldering iron I had, let it get hot, and I poked through the hole um, the mounting holes and made a little melt hole and then I put the top section of weather stripping on and once the top section was on in the hole I made on the other side I took this punch and I just pushed up and wherever it poked through I took a sharpie and made a mark and then again after I was done with that I took the soldering iron and just went from the opposite side so that all my holes are going to be easy to get the 5 16 bolts through. Uh, so now this is pretty much dried the fiberglass in the tub. It's pretty much even with the uh, shower drain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that Lexel caulk I had showed you earlier and I'm just going to go around the edges of the fiberglass to make sure everything's sealed. Um, and again, once I get this all in, I am going to cock the inside of this every seam, every place so that no water can get out. So um, I will get ready for the next step. The next step, we're going to be putting the tub in. Um, or actually, we might measure for the, for the piping off the pump first. So let me get all these cleaned up, cocked, and ready to go. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, here we are after the last step, and uh, we've got the pump sitting in on the raised floor that we talked about before. Um, I've done the plumbing off the pump and kept it two inch all the way up where it will be level with the uh, screen top that goes on it. Um, and then it goes down to half inch, which I'm going to use half inch hose, so half inch fitting will screw right in. Um, I've also put in the bulkhead fitting on the bottom so when it comes time to replace the media you can get the media out easily. Uh, it's a one and a half inch bulkhead fitting. I grabbed that at, uh, I actually got that on Amazon. I also found out later you could get them at Northern Tool. Okay, so we've got that pretty much done. We've got this top rack done. Um, and with the rack off you can see it sits in there very very sturdy it doesn't doesn't move around in there the whole assembly I started the pump very quiet very smooth running it doesn't shake it All right so now I'm gonna get ready to um, put the assembly into the cabinet up from the bottom so when I get ready to do that part I will start it up again it's basically it's nothing really much to tell you now it's basically just plumbing fittings from Lowe's that I used to come off the pump, come up to there. Now later, if I need to make an additional agitation unit, um, I'm gonna tap into one of the fittings and just um, screw a connector in there and maybe run a little line down to help with agitation if I need it. But that's where we are right now. I'll shut this down and when it's time to bolt the cabinet up inside to the tub, um, I will start again. Okay, we are back with the um, wet blast vapor hone cabinet build with the Harbor Freight cabinet. Um, what I've done is 
I'm using some couple pieces of wood and a jack, another piece of wood, got a piece of carpet under it just so nothing will get scratched up. And I positioned the bottom tub using that to hold it up. You know, being one person putting this together, that'll make it easier. And as I mentioned before, I replaced the, uh, the hardware that came with it that goes through the, the panels. Um, I went with stainless steel hardware. Now, the holes are 5 16 I don't know if they are in the current cabinet because Harbor Freight changes things. You never know when it's going to change. Uh, but um, they're 5 16 holes, and they came with what look like smaller than quarter inch screws so I went and got stainless steel one inch with nylon locking nuts stainless steel to hold the base uh, the weather stripping I showed you in the previous segment really really did a good job sealing all the way around uh, you can see it in here I mean it it's tight I'm still gonna caulk everything but it's very tight now once it was in and I bolted it all in I put the pump into the base and I took a very large thick stainless steel washer and bent a curve onto it and then took a smaller stainless steel washer to hold down the uh, electrical cord and then I ran the electrical cord through a hole above where the water line will be I did use a waterproof connector um, these connectors I'll show you. I got them on Amazon and I got a big bag of them for $10 and it comes with five different sizes here. So they're, they're really nice connectors. They work really well. They have rubber in there. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like a bulkhead fitting for wire that tightens up. Um, the only thing is they don't come with any O-rings. I could have siliconed it but instead I put a nice fat O-ring onto it between the cabinet and the fitting inside to stop any water from coming out but for 10 bucks on Amazon for a bag it was either 35 or 40 of them you get it was 35 you get um, five different sizes seven of each for ten dollars so this is a good buy so that comes out the back of the cabinet right there right now I've also started drilling this upper hole this is a um, hose barb bulkhead this one will give me a uh, male garden hose fitting inside and that's half inch thread on the back that's where the um, the rinse hose will attach to inside for rinsing the parts off and then this lower hole here I'm waiting on another bulkhead uh, that is going to be for the windshield spray to keep the windshield clean while you're using the unit um, I'm also going to put a third one in that I'm going to use as a slurry agitator if needed. I'm not putting it in just yet. Um, on the back of the cabinet, that's where the factory vent is. I'm going to uh, use some 3 inch PVC and make a tall stack vent over here. I'll take a video of that when I do it. So we'll go back to the inside. Okay, so once I got it mounted in, you remember I cut the middle bar out so we could just drop the pump right in. I disconnected the pump return down there in the bottom. It's two screws or two bolts and it pops right off. So then I dropped in the, uh, the motor, connected the wire back up, ran it to the outside and then bolted this, this piece on here. Now you can see this comes up right above the floor line here. That's going to be the feed for the uh, blast nozzle with the slurry mix. Um, now I took the floor and I cut the floor up a little bit. Let me get it and I'll show you. I'll put it in here. Now this isn't the, the floor you're going to be using to work on. This is, um, let's call it a support floor. This would have been the floor if you were using this as a sandblast cabinet. But, uh, we're going to have another layer over this. So what I did was I made some cutouts in it so that I can take it out if I need to work on anything. Um, also, the hose on the uh, pump just stuck up, just, we're talking a hair too much and I didn't want to just have, be pushing down on it, so I cut a little opening for it, but you'll see that what I'm going to use for the floor in here is rubber, 
and I went to Lowe's and I got this heavy anti-fatigue mat. I mean, it's really, really thick, heavy rubber. I'm going to cut it to the size of the inside of the cabinet, lay it in there. It's got holes to let everything drip down in it, and it's a, it's a really heavy work surface. So this was 25 bucks at Lowe's. I'll cut a piece to that size, and then that mat will lay inside over this screening here, so you won't even realize that that's there. Um, so that's where we are so far. Um, next up, I will continue to drill some more holes, and uh, once I get all the holes drilled that I need from the inside to the outside and get it all vacuumed out, I will cock the entire inside of the cabinet, and I will continue on very soon. Okay, here we are with the continuation of the wet blast vapor home build with the Harbor Freight cabinet. Um, okay, since I last did this, um, I've been thinking about the, um, the slurry agitator that I wanted to add, and I felt that I should probably do some of that now. So I unbolted the return from the pump and brought it out here and what I did was I added a T coming off the small section of PVC now um, nobody locally sold a snap fit um, saddle fitting so I made my own for those of you that don't know what that is it is you cut a small portion away from a T fitting until it makes it past the halfway mark and it snaps onto the pipe you'd be surprised how strong it snaps on so what I did was first I cut the width to match the available amount of PVC pipe I had then I sliced off the bottom um, then I used high strength PVC cement all around it and then snapped it into place I let it dry for a couple hours and then you drill out the hole which in this case was one inch and now I have my my um, slurry agitator exit off the main thing and again this isn't high high pressure but um, I've used saddle tees before and I've never seen a problem even in high pressure so that should work out okay so that's gonna go back inside and it will fit just like you see right there and then I will elbow off of it and direct it down towards the bottom of the pump with a couple of other fittings um, things I've done since last time is I put the uh, the other bulkhead in for the um, surface water drain now the surface water drain is gonna go into this big bin you see under here and we're gonna get into that um, probably today or tomorrow where that's going to be a filtering system for the water to take the solids out and to absorb any oil on the surface. Um, then it will come out of the other end of that box and it will be pumped up through a rinse pump that will sit up here on the shelf. And then the rinse pump will go into another filter and then it'll go to these two fittings on the back of the cabinet. Uh, the upper fitting will be for the windshield washer and the lower fitting will be for the rinse hose, you know, just like a garden hose with a sprayer, um, so that you can clean the parts. Now, I've also done the rear vent. Uh, for the rear vent, let's see, why isn't this focusing? Let's move over here, maybe. Okay, so the rear vent, I used um, basically a, a PVC toilet flange, three inch, and a stainless steel um, toilet ring for the flange, and then stainless steel hardware, I bolted it in with um, stainless steel walking nylon nuts. Okay, and then I just used PVC and made the stack. And the stack goes all the way up. And then I put a coupling at the top. And the reason I put the coupling up there was so that when I put the filter bag on the top uh, and tighten it, it won't just fly off if it's just smooth pipe. So that's your vent system. And again, um, from what I understand is uh, since you're using a lot of air and there's a lot of pressure um, The vent does have a tendency to blow out little drips and smidgens of stuff. So that's why I did the the um, Coupler at the top so we'll add the vent bag and I have the vent bags right over here Let 
these uh, filter bags and they have a uh, drawstring at the bottom and an elastic thing. If it's not tight enough, I can always put a tie wrap. Okay, so I think that's where we are for now. So I'm gonna stop this video and we'll go a little further and then I'll come back and tell you what I did and how I did it. And that's it for now. Okay, here we are back with the uh, Harbor Freight Wet Blast Vapor Home build. Um, I've got the inside completely caulked and sealed with the Lexel caulking that we talked about before. Um, I've got both of my uh, hose barb fittings coming through the top. I've got the power for the pump coming in through a waterproof connector. I also had to order some larger waterproof connectors for the air hose that's going to come in to meet up with the slurry hose. Uh, so, and, and when I get this done, if you guys want, I'll make a whole list of all the parts and where I got them so you can get them. Uh, so what I've done since the last time was I just basically emptied out the cabinet. I took out the glasses for the light and the uh, main viewing area. And I've pretty much just gone around and caulked and sealed everything to make sure that it's ready to go. Um, now, other things I've done since then, I'll just wipe my finger off because, of course, I just touched some caulk that's wet. Okay, so as far as the air for this, I'm using a 200 PSI regulator into an electronic ball valve. I went with a ball valve instead of a regular solenoid valve because the ball valve ensures that I'm going to get the CFM flow through the airlines whereas what I've seen with a lot of the solenoid valves is they can handle the pressure but they just don't have the flow through um, that you need and from what I understand you need a lot of flow through on your air to really have this cabinet work effectively. Uh, the other thing I've done is this was the valve for the um, almost like a skimmer on a pool. It skims the top surface of the water where all your oil and everything's floating and it's going to drain into this bin that's down here on the bottom and we can go over that bin now this filtering system and what I've done okay we'll take it out over here okay so what this bin is it's basically sectioned off into four compartments the first compartment here, the hose will go into maybe, I don't know, a quarter to the third of the way down. And as the water skims off the top of the cabinet and comes down into the drain into there, any of your solid particles should drop to the bottom and any of your oils and solids should float to the top. I mean, your oils and other things that will float will come to the top. As the water level rises, um, it will again skim the surface in your your oils and stuff that's that's floating will stay up and any of the solids that are left will go to the bottom now when it reaches this third compartment this is a special oil absorbing material um, I bought a big big box of them on Amazon I think it was $30 for 100 sheets and this one's cut down a little to fit this is the same material they use when they have an oil spill and they throw these on the top of the floating uh, uh, oil spills in water and it absorbs all the oils and contaminants from the water. So once your water gets to the third bin, that will be floating here on the top and that'll catch your oils and contaminants on the top. Now to keep the uh, oil cloth from getting into the fourth compartment, you can see that I've made all these little line of holes here. So what's going to happen is, is that your water line there will be lower than the rest of the cabinet. So your water will make it through and go into the other side where it will be sucked up by a pump to use for rinsing as well as the windshield washer. And this should keep the material from flowing across and just falling in the other side. Um, I may need to tweak this a little. Some companies use a bigger version of this. I'm hoping I can get away with a smaller version because I'd like to keep it tucked under the machine just to save space. If not, I may have to go to a bigger version, but you know, I, I'm hoping that this is going to do it. So we're just going to cover this up for now. I'm going to put a couple holes in the lid for the return hose and the pump hose after. So that's going to sit under there. Now, once it comes out on this side, 
it's going to come up and it's going to go to this pump here that I got over at Northern Tool Supply. Uh, it's a 70 PSI. It's got 3 8 inch fittings. It's a 12 volt pump. Um, it's going to come up into this barb. It'll come out of the pump. Now, that, that water that's coming out will be relatively clean based upon the filter box, but then it'll come up and it'll go into this filter to just make sure that we filter out any of the last contaminants before it gets to go into the cabinet. Then from there, it's going to go over to here, and here we have a solenoid valve. This is going to be for the windshield washer so that I can flip a switch and have the windshield washer come on. It just won't be on continuously while the pump's running. And then the lower fitting will be for your coiled up garden hose with a spray attachment for doing your rinsing and cleaning after you're done uh, wet blasting the, the item. So today we're going to work on all this plumbing, get all this done. Um, we're going to see if we can get the inside of the cabinet together. Um, we're really close to being finished and then I can start testing this, figuring out, you know, water versus uh, abrasive amounts and just getting the machine working. Um, now I am using, I just forgot to mention, off the uh, solenoid ball valve on the air, I'm using a half inch heavy duty air hose right here. And that's why I had to get this big fitting for here so that I could put the air hose through there and then uh, get that all tightened up and waterproof. And like I said, I'll give you guys a list of what I used and where I got it. Um, now the last thing that I'll go over with you right now is I took the top light box off because the fluorescent light system that comes in these is pretty weak and it gets warm. So I wanted to do an LED system up there as well as I have to have the power supply for the pump, for the rinse pump and for the uh, solenoid for the uh, wipers. So I've taken the box off and I have, uh, here, let me take these out of here and I'll show you. I've taken the box off and I took the fluorescent light fixture out of it and I'm still going to use the power switch, the, let me show you the, right here. I'm still going to use the red main power switch and when I turn that switch on that will light up the LEDs inside as well as turn on the 12 volt power supply. Now it will go directly into the uh, uh, switches here that say water pump and windshield wiper. Windshield wiper obviously will trip the solenoid to let the windshield wiper turn on. And water pump is just for that northern pump if I don't want it on, if I'm just doing something inside the cabinet or working on it and I, I want the lights on, I don't want the pump running at the same time. So I will have a cutoff for the pump and for the windshield washer solenoid. This will just control power supply on and lighting. Uh, so I bought those switches again on Amazon and I can give you you know, links to where to get them. Now, I do have a fuse block I'm putting in because it's important you fuse everything. The only thing that I'm not that happy about is is the amount of screws to get this lid off if a fuse blows. But if a fuse blows, I've got a problem. So, you know, they should never blow. You should be fine. So, I'll put it in there for now. I don't think anything will ever blow. We'll see. Now, I got a 40 amp 12 volt power supply that will be mounted inside. So that'll go in inside and that will be for the solenoid, the pump, the lights. And I may end up putting a cooling fan in here. It's got vents cut out along the um, edge of the top lid, but I may end up putting a cooling fan down there just to make sure that everything breathes well. Because even though the LED lights don't make a lot of heat, they do make enough that in a, in a confined area and the power supply, even though it's got a little fan on it, if it's not getting cool air, even though there's vents all around this, I still may want to do the fan just to, just to be safe. Now, for the LED panel, I made my own panel. You can see it here. This panel is um, on a piece of 1 8 inch aluminum. It's, I believe, let me see, four. It's five and a half inches wide by 24 inches long. It might be 25 inches long. And it's going to sit in here. You can see I've already drilled the holes. It's going to sit in the 
the cabinet. It uses 396 number 5630 LEDs. It's quite bright. Uh, it doesn't draw a lot of current, doesn't make a lot of heat, um, so it should be very bright inside that cabinet. Um, actually very bright. So that's what's going to go there and then after that, once it's mounted, once it's in on this top rim area, I will put a piece of um, that same closed cell foam that we used around the lower bin to sit against the glass tightly and hold everything in place and uh, that's, a, that's what we're working on for the top. So as I get further along with this on the top, I will, yeah, all I did was just take all the positive and negatives and I tied them in. They're all heavily soldered and heat shrinked. Um, so, and they had the self-sticking 3M tape on the back. So I just used the, the self-sticking tape. Now I did run a piece of double stick tape under this first edge so that none of the edges that were cut can possibly short out to the aluminum so they're fine from shorting out and I'll probably paint it with a little uh, liquid tape liquid electrical tape just over them just to seal it up but I mean every few inches they're they're copper um, I tend to use the non waterproof um, LED assemblies to do this because what I've seen is the waterproof ones while they have a nice rubber coating on them and they seem great it seems that that rubber coating yellows over a short amount of time they don't seem to stay clear long and they run hot because the LED is in that rubber or silicone or whatever it is. So they tend to run a lot hotter with the same LED. And like I said, they yellow after time so they get dimmer. Uh, so I always try and go with non-waterproof and just make sure the area they're going into is waterproof. Um, so I think that is where we are for now. I will end this video and we will continue after I get some more stuff done. Okay, I figured I should uh, show you where I've gotten to before I start to cover things up. Um, so the inside of the cabinet completely sealed up with that Lexel uh, sealant. Um, I've got the pump back in and I attach the PVC output up to where the, uh, the hose fitting for the slurry mix will go. Um, I also have the the saddle T fitting I made going into a one inch elbow. Now what I've done is I just put Teflon tape on that and I don't even have it in tight. It's tight to move but I wanted to be able to bend it up and down. Remember this isn't a really high pressure area so and if it leaks a hair it doesn't matter because it's going to be in the water anyway. Um, so I have that slurry agitator going down by the pump. Now I can adjust the angle of it. I could I just have these compression fit on right now because um, I want to be able to adjust them and find what the best um, size adjustment angle and um, I'll probably have to adjust this after to get a perfect um, agitation going on. I mean if it works great you know out of the line fantastic but I have a feeling I might need to uh, work with it a little. All right, so we've got the pump in. That's all set inside. We're going to start to put the inside, the grate back in, the rubber mat, <clears throat> and I'm going to get the hoses hooked up inside. I haven't done anything with the, the fittings at the top yet. Um, now on the back of the cabinet, I have got the fittings. I have the, uh, the second pump for the rinse and the cleaning of the water. That one's all mounted down. I use 1024 cap head screws, washers, and locking. Um, uh, locking nylon nuts. Um, I haven't put the hose on the suction side that's going to come from the filtered water, but all your other uh, hoses and fittings are done into the filter, then out of the filter, over to the solenoid for the windshield washer, and over to the hose barb for the uh, garden hose rinse. So all that has been completed. Um, again, I, I've been buying most of this stuff on Amazon, uh, most of it from Lowe's. Uh, little bit from Northern Tool, a little bit from Harbor Freight, so um, I will make a complete list when I'm done. And uh, Alright, so I'm going to start putting the insides together and we'll come back soon and give you another update on how things are going. If there's anything I've done that's complex, I would, you know, do a making video, but it's basically just gluing on PVC fittings, Teflon tape, um, hose clamps, so there's not, there's nothing really complex yet. 
Okay, so we will sign off and see you soon. Okay, we're back for another update on the wet blast cabinet. And let's see. I put the metal grate in. You can see underneath here. I put the metal grate in. I put the rubber mat that we talked about on top here, which is the anti-fatigue mat that I picked up at Lowe's. It's very heavy, heavy rubber. Um, I have connected the slush hose as well as the air hose. And you can see they go into the, the blast nozzle assembly. I'm starting off with a seven millimeter nozzle. Uh, I don't know if I'll move to an eight, down to a six, but I'm using a, a seven millimeter opening for now. So you've got the, the hose assembly in there. I also did the garden hoses all set up in here. So you've got your rinse coming from the filtered water. And I also did, if you look up in the top there, let me see if I can zoom in there a little. There is a on-off valve that goes into some tubing and then it goes to the windshield washer. I still have to adjust the brackets on the windshield washer. Um, and that uh, uh, piece that I'm using for the windshield washer was off a $5 sprinkler from Walmart. So hopefully that'll do the job really well. I also cleaned the glass and the piece of plexi on the top and put that back in. I have not put the glass in the top box on yet. Now, I think we had mentioned last time that I was going with a half inch um, ball valve because I would get a better flow through. Uh, another good part of these is that they don't draw any current once they're open. Once they're open, they draw no current. When you release power, it's energized. I guess it has some capacitors or whatever inside that store enough power to close the valve once it releases uh excuse me, once it gets disconnected from power. So with that being said, let's go back over to the setup on the back. And originally I was using a 12 volt solenoid here for the water for the windshield washer. Uh, after I got it all wired up, I did a harness on it with a plug and I tested it out and it works good. The problem is, is that it gets hot, really hot, and it draws between three and five amps of current continuously the whole time while it gets hot. And I really don't want to waste five amps of current from my 12 volt power supply. I mean, I got a, a 40, 40 amp power supply, but still, I don't want this thing getting hot. So what I've done is I've ordered basically the same um, 120 volt ball valve that I'm using down here, only I got it in a 12 volt. Uh, again, the only drawback to those mechanical ball valves is that they take three to four seconds to open and three to four seconds to close, whereas the solenoid valves are instantaneous. But since they draw no current whatsoever at all while they're open or closed, only during the opening process, I, I think it's just a better way to go. So we're going to take this apart and put that other one in when it comes in in a day or so. Um, now we'll move on to the, the top piece. The top box where the original fluorescent light was, let me see if I can get a long shot of it here. What I've done is uh, I did end up putting a computer fan in it to cool it because I figured the power supply is in there, but I'm mounting it upside down. So all the heat's going to be baking. I did use a couple of spacers and raise the power supply up a little bit off the bottom. And then I'm using some stainless steel screws to hold it in place. But I, I raised it so it could get a little bit of airflow underneath it. And the fan I'm using is really high CFM. It draws about, I think, 1.5 amps, 1.6 amps. But the amount of air it blows, you'll definitely hear this thing running. And then I used a, a computer power supply fan. So we've got the fan. We have the power supply. Um, let me see if I can just zoom out a little. All right. So everything is fused. I put a fuse box in. So everything comes off the power supply in a fuse box, out of the fuse box. If it needs a switch, it goes to a switch. Otherwise, it goes to these two ports I put on the back. 
Uh, this one is for the windshield washer and this one is for the rinse pump. Uh, I just used, here's what I used. I had some old computer power supplies that were broken that burnt up. So what I did was I took connectors and fittings out and then used them to make the harnesses and the connections on the back of the box. That way if I ever need to take the top off and work on it, like if one of these fuse blows, I was thinking about putting the fuse box on the outside, but I'm going to leave it in. If I need to get at it, I can, and with the two connections I put on the back, I can just unplug it and take this off. So this box is pretty much ready to go back on. So let's see, here is the the panel, the LED panel that I made. That already has the connectors on it, so it's ready to go in. So now that everything in this is completed, I'm going to put the, I'll screw the LED panel in, and then I'm going to use some of the same closed cell foam that I used between the, uh, the top and the bottom here for waterproofing. I'm going to put a piece of that on each tab here that sits by the glass on top. So you'll have your LED panel, then you'll have those foam, foam tabs on here, and then I will put this on. And up here where the glass goes, the only seam, that one's all sealed with Lexel. It's sealed from the inside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very small bead of silicone on this before I clean the glass and put the glass back on and then the box. And the glass is held down with a compression fit from these tabs that I'm gonna put the piece of foam on. So the next time I come back, we should be almost ready to test. I mean, it should be done next time I come back. I'm just gonna be waiting on that valve for the uh, windshield washer. All right, I'll be back soon. Okay, here we are back. I did change the solenoid valve to the 12 volt ball valve with the auto close so that when you release power it closes by itself. Uh, I also got some better brass fittings to go for the hosing uh, and I put a power strip. Here's where the foot pedal switch I had showed you before is plugged in and then to that I put a 1 to 3 where I have the pump and the uh, uh, ball valve for the air on so when I press on the foot switch it starts up the pump and lets the air in and this is just for your cabinet light 12 volts so that pretty much takes care of the assembly and now I'm gonna start to put water in it and run a test and if that runs good then I'll start adding glass bead to it figure out the best ratio and I'll be back with another okay, coming video. back to you with the Harbor Freight do-it-yourself vapor blast cabinet um, which we have dubbed the Venom Blaster. So last time I told you I was pretty much ready to do testing, so that's what we did. Um, I loaded it up, got everything going. It performed fantastic. In fact, here is the initial piece that I did. Um, still a little, I haven't rinsed it, so you can see a little bit of glass bead on it. And you can see there's a little bit of dirt in there, only because I just did this as a test. I quickly did a couple of test pieces in it and the cabinet performed incredibly well. Um, there was one tiny leak in the bottom basin, so I figured I would take this opportunity, take it apart, dry it out, take everything out of it, fix that one tiny leak in the bottom, but I wanted to show you once again the um, slurry agitator with the T-fitting that I made that went in there. because. It works perfectly. I don't have to modify anything. So I figure I'd give you a shot again of how that is in there coming off the PVC. Um, and it goes right down. Give you a couple angles at it. And for agitating the slurry, it works incredibly well. Um, I didn't even need any adjustments at all. Now, a couple things that I've added since then. I've added this little barrier on the bottom of the door okay and what this is is this is um, floor molding that they use in commercial buildings along the carpet I just bought a piece of it at Lowe's a dollar and 85 cents I believe and cut it to length and now when I close the door you see it just goes along and then from the inside it makes a small little ramp that keeps the glass bead and water from collecting on this top edge. Now, 
it's not that it drips out when I open the door, but there's a thick layer of glass bead and water and going in and out with the parts, then we start to knock it off. So now with that in there, when you're done cleaning the part, you can just rinse that area really quick and you open it up and you'll have some water driplets. Um, I'm going to work on some type of a, of a tray or a gutter system for a long here, but really I'm not even sure if I'm going to need it because once I put this on and rinsed it, other than a few water drips on the floor, I really wasn't having an issue. Um, now the other thing is that you can see I have my windshield rinse hanging there. The windshield rinse worked okay. Um, I guess I expected more from it. So I, I really didn't want to put a wiper on it because, you know, wiping the glass bead against the glass inside, I'm sure is going to cause the glass to, to eventually get, you know, the abrasive on it and wear the glass down and I'll be replacing the glass. So I figured water spray was the best way to go. I'm going to try a few other water spray techniques. This one works really well. It's just that it makes such a thick layer of water on the glass, it's kind of blurred and distorted at times. Most of the time it's fine. Now, I may end up adding a wiper with that, which is probably the best way to go, but I'll keep you guys informed and post videos as I change things and do things. And I'm also going to post some videos of the machine actually working um, and polishing up the parts. So, all I can say is, is that everything worked out great. I'm getting fantastic flow of the slurry mix through the nozzle um, with a half inch assembly uh, uh, regulator and a ball valve. I'm getting plenty of air into it. In fact, I'm probably going to have to turn it down because this thing is powerful. Um, so I think I showed you last time. I showed you everything the way it was done in the back. So I'm going to end this video and you can watch the whole. I should have this video up probably well about a week um when you watch it i'm not asking for anything but for you to subscribe to my channel so that i can try and get my subscribers up uh, i will keep posting videos of any changes i do to this things i find that are better um i'm hoping if i add the windshield wiper i'll still come in at the under 900 dollars price but we'll see all right and i'd love to see the machines that you guys build and and if you have any questions i'll try and answer them so thanks for watching Okay, this is going to be the last video in this build series um, for this particular segment. Uh, I did end up putting a wiper unit onto the cabinet. I used another power supply jack from a computer power supply, and that 12 volt supply used in that hood was so big that I just used another output off of that fused um, and put the wiper in that. And turning down the pressure on the sprayer that I had in there works perfectly. It gives it just the right amount of water to clean everything nicely. Um, other than that, everything is working great. Um, I'm still gonna think about building some type of gutter here. I mean, I put this in and this cut down tremendously on the amount of water and um, glass beads that would come pouring out when I would open and close the door. So that's a, a great, great addition to this cabinet. Um, let's see. I think that's about it, guys. Um, I'll try and answer whatever questions you throw at me. This is the final video for the build of the Venom Blaster. Um, it's working great. I will shoot some videos of it in action and working. Um, also, one more, one more quick thing. You'll see these valves I have on the side just to let you know. What I did was, um, that lower valve down there is when you want to change the glass media. Uh, what I did was I used a two cup measuring cup and I put in basically, I guess, 10 cups because I put it in five times. So I put 10 cups in and then I filled the water till it was just about to go down this drain. And then I filled up the uh, filter basin, which works very well. And I've left the cover off so that I can monitor it as I'm using it. And that filter setup has been working great. Um, I get nice clean water up above. Um, I, do, I do end up with quite a bit of glass bead in the bottom over time, but I did a tremendous amount of parts before I had to empty that and clean it out and get the glass bead and reuse it. Um, but it's only because the glass bead is so fine. It's almost like when you make chocolate milk and you stir it and it's all mixed together, but if you let it sit there, some of the chocolate starts to settle at the bottom. 
I'm using a very, very fine glass bead. So it almost stays floating and suspended in the water. So as the water surface comes down off into this, because I'm only skimming the surface, kind of like a pool skimmer with this. Um, so even though I'm only skimming the surface, since the glass bead is suspended in, I do get um, a fair amount of glass beads washing into the basin, but the way the filter box works is perfect. They all, all the glass bead stays contained in this first compartment. So that's the only thing that, that you can see. In fact, you can see down there, it's kind of milky, even if I just touch it. Now, when I come out here in about an hour, since I've used the machine, the top water will be much cleaner and all the glass bead settles at the bottom and then I can pretty much rinse it out and reuse that glass bead again. So, um, but again, I can, I can spray a lot of parts before I have to do that. So, other than that, everything's working great. Once again, hope you enjoyed this video of the Venom Blaster. Please subscribe to my, pay, to my uh, uh, YouTube channel and I will make some videos about this using it and upkeep on it. All right, thanks guys.